I'm here today to confess a problem to you, and a very personal one at that. I want to confess the time that I realized that social media was having a negative effect on my life. And now you see, this is no ordinary problem. This is a problem that lingers in the lives of millions of people today, especially people of the millennial generation and Generation Z. You see, these are the people who grew up with social media or were born with it. I might even suggest being born in the two worlds, the real world and the virtual world. But a virtual world in which we crave and desire an unfounded call for validation. Now let me give you guys a little bit of information about myself. I'm 26 years old and I'm millennial. And according to Cigna, the Health Insurance 2018 US Loneliness Index indicated that millennials, and even more so Generation Z, are amongst the loneliest of Americans. And I'm talking about our kids here, our youth, and even some of us. But the problem, the problem is not with social media itself. The problem is our obsession with it, our fulfillment from it, and our desires to be validated by it. Now, does that not sound crazy to anyone? That we would start to allow ourselves to get lost in technology? Lost in the sense of what is real and what is fake? Lost in the sense of who really cares and who really matters? Now, I ask you this after much thought and deliberation. And what I've found is that, you see, I have over 500 Facebook friends, 184 Instagram followers, and about 100 or so Snapchat followers. Of all those friends, I have three that I hang out with consistently, about three to four times a week. And the funny thing is, they're not even that active on social media, if not my most least active members. My three best friends represent my real, my real world. My 500 Facebook friends represent my virtual world. There were times when I could not decide which was more important. And this is when I realized that I was truly having a problem not only participating in one, but many social media platforms. You see, I had embedded social media and embraced it. It's manipulative and misleading content into my everyday life. I let social media pull me, my mind, and my self-esteem in any direction I was influenced in. Now, I also have to add that social media is a propaganda machine, unloading an abundance of diverse and partisan information to sway you toward whatever is hot and trending at the time. Facebook, for example, currently and has been for some time now, experiencing a difficult situation with false news, false profiles, false agendas, and even the mishandling of our information. Not to mention the vast amount of perspectives, opinions, and even personal information available to everyone. My fear is that this is becoming information overload for us, that it's becoming too much information at once. How do we process this much diverse information in such a short period of time? How do we know what is real and what is curated? And we must ask ourselves, are these really the things that we should fear missing out on? So please tell me, does anyone here have that friend that says good morning Facebook every morning? <laughs> or that friend that has an opinion on every single political issue? And I don't know about you, but I had those friends that were in relationships and you knew exactly when they were fighting. <laughs> For me and apparently the rest of you, this is truly not the type of experience I'm looking to have on social media, <laughs> which, is, which is why my problem with social media is not how it has affected the choices I have made, but more importantly, my self-esteem. You see, I became a perfectionist. And according to an article in The Guardian concerning millennial health, Perfectionism consists of an individual's needs to measure up to their peers. This is a result of our desires for validation from our peers. You see, we, we long for recognition and we'll work hard to establish credibility, but we will also expose ourselves for attention. I have longed for recognition, credibility, and attention. I think we all have. It's human nature too. I have shared with the world an insight into what I would consider a very private life. I think it goes without saying for the people that know me, I'm a very introverted and private person. And for someone so private, I even started to take selfies. <laughs> and I hate selfies. <laughs> but I saw attention and I saw likes. If 
followers, retweets, and posts. The sad thing is, I sought this validation from my 500 virtual friends and not the three friends I hung out with daily, where what appealed to the virtual world started to become more and more valuable. So just let you guys know, I do a little bit of design, a little bit of landscape design on the side, and um, I've posted some online. And um, after doing all this, I was extremely proud of myself, very impressed. This is my first time using digital art as my medium, and I honestly thought I did a really good job. However, Facebook and Instagram didn't feel the same way. Or at least I felt they didn't. When I post these pictures and not get as many likes as I wanted or hoped for, it affected me. It affected my mood that day. It affected how I felt about my passions. Constantly measuring my work to that of my peers. It would cause me to check my phone constantly, hoping that any notification was a notification of validation. I had hoped I would check my phone after checking my phone, just hoping I didn't miss anything. So the important message to take away from all this is that the people who have seen my artwork, the people close to me, my friends and my family, have been more than impressed. And it made me feel as though I was a good artist. And you see that right there, that experience, that connection should be enough because that is an example of real validation because it involved real emotion, expression, feedback that I could see and I could feel. And I could tell that they liked it without them even having to push a button. You see people, this is what really matters. This right here is a real relationship, friendship, up close and personal. For without it being this way, can no relationship be truly fulfilling for any of us? To conclude, let me say that I am not an, av uh, not an advocate against technology or social media. I understand the ways in which social media has allowed us to connect with one another on a greater level and with greater distance in between. And believe me when I say I hear the voices that social media has given to so many, but I am simply saying that we need to utilize social media and technology responsibly and be aware of our interactions with social media. And if this does not apply to you and you have a good grasp on your self-worth, please consider it your duty to make others feel the same. And lastly, to our youth, it is much more vital that you are aware of your interactions with social media for young minds that are naive to the realities of life are susceptible to fabricated influences. Thank you very much.